and his symptoms really were quite typical of Addison's. His symptoms included fatigue, weakness, dizziness, a hunger or craving for salt, low blood pressure, especially when standing for a long time, nausea, vomiting, back pain. Now, as far as that low blood pressure when standing for a long time, you can imagine when someone is on a campaign trail, which does require a lot of standing, being in the hot sun, shaking hands, being up and ready, that would be quite strenuous if you have Addison's disease. It was actually documented that President Kennedy collapsed two times. He collapsed once during the election campaign at the end of a parade, and he collapsed a second time during a congressional visit to Britain. So he really did have some of the typical symptoms of Addison's disease. Some other symptoms of Addison's disease include muscle weakness, weight loss, and in women, they can have a decreased sex drive, and also discoloration. You can get a darkening of the hands, the face, and in the back of the neck. So these are the general symptoms of Addison's disease. So what is the cause of Addison's disease? Well, back when Addison's was first discovered, tuberculosis, that infection, tuberculosis, was the most common cause of Addison's. Now, however, tuberculosis only accounts for less than 20% of cases of Addison's, and autoimmune disease accounts for most of Addison's disease. So autoimmune disease is what President Kennedy had. What is autoimmune disease? Well, just like in a biography, if you write an autobiography, it's about yourself. Well, an autoimmune disease, instead of your antibodies fighting the bacteria and the viruses and germs in the outside world, your antibodies turn against you and begin attacking your own body. So in President Kennedy's case, his antibodies attacked his adrenal glands, which is what caused his adrenal insufficiency. Another thing that happened early on in the 1960 election, when Lyndon B. Johnson was John F. Kennedy's opponent, he too had heard that JFK was sick. And he actually put out the official statement that JFK had Addison's disease. Now you can imagine, if you're a young man running for president and the whole world finds out that you have this grave illness, they may perceive you as sickly and weak and unable to perform the job of the president of the United States. So what did JFK's team do? Well, the Kennedy campaign actually got Kennedy's physicians to put together a very clever statement. They put out a statement that stated, John F. Kennedy does not have Addison's disease caused by tuberculosis. Well, this statement was not exactly a lie because JFK did not have Addison's disease caused by tuberculosis. He had Addison's disease caused by autoimmune disease. So again, even back then, they were spinning things in politics, but guess what? It worked. The entire story was dropped at that time and the rest is history. But yes, tuberculosis now accounts for just a small cause of Addison's disease and most patients have Addison's because of autoimmune disease. Interestingly, President Kennedy had some other illnesses related to autoimmune disease. He had thyroid disease, which likely was caused by autoimmune disease. He also had ulcers and colitis and chronic diarrhea, also speculated to have been caused by his autoimmune disease. He also suffered from recurrent urinary tract infections, which could have been because he was on large amounts of steroids chronically, which could suppress his immune system. And he had chronic back pain. Now that could be from autoimmune disease, or the chronic use of steroids could have caused him to develop weak bones or osteoporosis. Another thing that was reported in his medical records 
mood swings. Now, the mood swings were only reported to be severe, maybe twice. And for a very, very, very short course, he took an antipsychotic. But again, his records show that that was just something that happened no more than twice. But patients who are on long-term steroids can sometimes develop mood swings or roid rage even. An important note to anyone who's taking steroids, not just if you have Addison's disease, if you're taking long-term steroids, it's important that you don't just stop the steroids cold turkey. You can't just stop taking steroids all of a sudden. You have to taper them down under the direction of your doctor. Why? Because if you're on these steroids long-term, then your adrenal glands, even if you don't have Addison's, will start to work at least temporarily a little less. So if you just stop taking your steroids cold turkey, well then you can go into an adrenal crisis where you can get all of those symptoms of Addison's disease and it can even be fatal. So for all patients taking chronic steroids, don't stop those things unless you have the direction of your physician. They have to be tapered. So what is the treatment for Addison's disease? Well, if your adrenal glands are not making the hormones that they're supposed to make, the treatment is to replace those hormones, or at least with something that acts like the hormones. So in the case of Addison's, the treatment is to give steroids. So JFK's medical records reveal that he was taking hydrocortisone, which is a steroid. He was taking prednisone, also a steroid. He took flugocortisone, and he also took testosterone to help to cut back on muscle weakness or weight loss or atrophy. He took vitamin C as well. And because he had thyroid disease, he also took thyroid replacement hormone. In addition, for part of President Kennedy's treatment, he had to take pain medicine. He had chronic excruciating back pain. And so he would get lidocaine and procaine injections in his back. He also had recurrent urinary tract infections. And so he took antibiotics quite often as well. Another thing he had, allergies. So that man was on allergy medicine. It's just really something to think about that statement he once made, that he was the healthiest candidate for president in the country. Amazing. So how do you get diagnosed with Addison's disease? Well, the initial test is an AM or a morning cortisol level. If this level is low, there are then follow-up tests to find out the source of your adrenal insufficiency. One interesting thing about autoimmune disease, which is of course why JFK had his Addison's disease, when autoimmune disease occurs in a person, it often runs in the family. We have later learned that JFK's sister, Eunice, had Addison's disease. And his son, the late JFK Jr., had Graves' disease. So there you have it. That sums up my general overview of President JFK's secret sickness. I find it really interesting. Now, normally I like to talk about pop culture and celebrity news and the way that those things intersect with health. But I'm also very, very intrigued by politics and history and how they intersect with medicine. Basically, I'm just nosy. And my nosiness transcends all time periods, all genres. It knows no limits and no bounds. So if there's any other health topic you'd like me to discuss, please, please, please comment down below. Subscribe to my page. Share it with others. Remember, prioritize yourself. If you have a sickness, don't keep it a secret from yourself. Go see your doctor. Strive to be a healthier, happier you. I'm Dr. Frida.